Jesus. You are long already. You deserve the glory. Jesus, you are Amen. Amen. Greetings, everyone. Welcome tonight to our teleconference service. God bless you for joining us. This is a wonderful day, it's beautiful outside and we thank God for this day. You know, we don't see many days like this and it's, it's extremely hot, but thank God for it. Um, you know, we, it doesn't ever seem to last too long, but you know, we are glad for the change of the weather. You know, I definitely would prefer hot than cold any day, but thank God. God is good. We give God praise and we give God thanks for the seasons. And you know, and he is good. He is good, and um, we are blessed. We are blessed today, tonight, um, this evening, to be alive and giving God the glory, because He alone is holy. He alone is worthy. He deserves the glory. Hallelujah! Only Him alone, and we give praise that we have such a great big wonderful loving God and you know and we are glad that as great and big and mighty as he is we can have our relationship with him I think that's wonderful because if we think of this world and the kings and the queens and the you know people of this world who are in high position we don't know them they don't know us and to them, we are just like a number, st a statistic, so to speak. But God knows us personally. And we also should know Him personally. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So thank God for this God we serve. You alone are holy. You alone deserve the glory. Praise the Lord, Jesus, hallelujah. So thank God we're going to go into the word of God. But before I do, I have a short prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you honor. For with the God who you are, you are God that sits high and look low. Hallelujah. You are highest of the highest, but yet you made yourself the lowest of the lowest. My God. So we thank you that you expand this universe. Hallelujah. You are bigger than this universe. Hallelujah. You are higher than the highest. Hallelujah. There's nothing above you, Lord, and there's nothing beneath you. You cover and comprehend all things. And we give you thanks that we are able to meet with you and talk with you, communicate with you, your mercies and your love and your grace has given us accessibility to you and we thank you. And we know that you hear us when we call upon you and we give you praise. Bless everyone who joined in this teleconference tonight. I pray that you will lead us. I pray you will direct us. I pray you will I'll speak to us, Lord, through your word and help us to give you the praise and the glory and the honor that is due to your marvelous name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So tonight, this evening, we're going to talk 
about faith. We want to talk about faith. Faith, you know, what is faith? And do we need faith to serve God? And how much faith do we need to please God? So I'm, I'm going to read a very famous scripture from Hebrews chapter 11, which explains to us in depth of what faith is and what faith means and how much we need to have it. We need to have faith day by day in our daily life and what we can achieve when we have faith. So looking back through, the, through time from the beginning until now, every child of God, every single prophet and patriot of old must and needed to have faith. It was a, requir it was a requirement to follow God, to serve God, to know God. And so we will look at this little word that has such a great meaning, faith. We're going to read Hebrews chapter 11. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By for it, for by it, the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of this his gift, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being born of God that things not seen as yet, move with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the hear with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith Sarah also, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore there even 
therefore spring there even one and him as good as dead so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable these all died in faith not have not having received the promise but being seen of them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country and truly if they had been mindful of that country from which whence they came out they might had opportunity to return to have returned but they desire a better country that is an heavenly wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God for he hath prepared them a city and by faith Abraham when he was tried offered up Isaac Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I let's look at these wonderful words telling us how great and wonderful it is when we have faith in God. And in it, it says faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen if we look at those words everything that we see everything that we know everything that we touch we don't need faith for them we don't need faith for something that we can see we need faith for things that we can't see we need faith for the hope of a better resurrection we need faith to enter into the kingdom of God. We need faith to know God. We need faith to achieve uh, uh, any of God's promises. We need faith. It is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So anything that we need even in our daily life the Bible says if we have faith we can receive it many things that we think about that we would like to have and that we need and we don't have if we have faith we can call upon God who is the essence of faith who is the foundation of faith and we can believe in him and if we pray and ask God through faith it's through faith it will be manifested in our life whatever it may be whatever our need may be so we anything that we have anything that we need we can achieve it through faith because the Bible tells us faith is a substance a substance is something that is that is that is touching something that you can hold you can hold it it's a substance a substance is a base a substance can be a foundation a substance can be something that generates so faith is all these things it is a substance of things hope for faith and it's the evidence of things not seen once we believe we can achieve and this is how God wants us to live God wants us to live in faith because the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight 
if we walk by sight, we are blind because we don't know what will come next. But if we walk by faith, we say, as David says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's because David could see once he had faith in God, he shall not want. And when we have faith in God, we can say like David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want because I have faith in God. And faith provides those things that I need and I want. Faith. So he went on to say, by faith, by it, the elders obtain a good report. If we today, as children of God, want to obtain a good report, we must have faith. If we want to please God, we must. It is imperative that we have faith. Because it says, by faith, the elders, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, all those great patriots and prophets, Joshua, Samson himself, the great strong man, but never a man who ever so strong as Samson, had faith in God, knew even though at the time when he fell away and the, the Philistine caught him and they did so many horrible things to him, but he had faith in God. He had faith in God. And when he was, his, they cut his hair and he lost all his strength. He had faith in God. And God gave him strength. And we see that the strength he had. He killed so many Philistines in his latter days. Because he had faith. He called upon God. Faith is calling upon God. Now it's went on to say, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So when God created the heaven and the earth, and he created the stars, the universe, when he created everything that we see, everything that we see, physical things, material things, material universe, when we created them, we were not there. But through his word, we believe that he did with his word. That he, the Bible says, he spoke the word and it was fulfilled. He called the world into existence by his word. How powerful and how great is the word of God. Through faith we understand that the worlds, the worlds that we know, were framed. And look how God wonderfully, greatly framed the world. Look where God put the sun. And look where he put the moon. The moon, the moon I think, is quarter million miles from the earth. And the sun is 93 million miles away. Look how God framed them. That they, in, in the night... The moon comes out, and in the day, the sun comes out by his word. He said that's the way it should be, and that's the way it was, and that's the way it is. And we believe and we understand it through faith. Through faith. So the things that were, things which are seen was not made by the things which do appear. And that's the problem with man, and that's the problem with this world. They believe everything exists by itself. They believe that the universe just came into existence. It did not just came into existence with a big bang as some people want us to believe. It came into existence because God called it into existence. His word, light that we see, was called into existence by the word of God. He said, let there be light. Light did not just come out of nowhere, it came out of God. So that the things which are seen 
were not made by the things that do appear. So nothing exists of itself. We live in a house. The house did not make itself. Someone made it. We did not make ourselves. God made us. And it's wonderful how God made man. Because in everything else, God just called them into existence. Hallelujah. God just called the world into existence. He just he called this, the, the, the earth out of the sea into existence. He called the light that filled the earth out of existence. He called it into existence. But when it comes to man, the mighty God, the great God, the great I am, the one and only, he took man personal. The Bible says he took it personal when it comes to man. All the animals we see, all the trees, all the fish in the sea, all, all the birds in the air, God just called them into existence. But when it comes to man, God did a very personal thing. The Bible says God took the dust of the earth. Hallelujah. God took the dirt of the earth. It out took the earth. Some people say clay, but God took it and God formed man. Hallelujah. That's, that's personal. That is as personal as it can get. He could have just called man out, said let man be. No. He took a frame man into his own image. And we wonder, we wonder why God loves us so much. Why God cares about us so much. Why God is so pa patient with us. Why God is so merciful to us. Why God loves us so much. Because God take man personal. Because man was made in his image. By faith. By faith. We believe these things. So things which. It says the things which are seen. Were not made of the things which do appear. That means they were made by the word of God. The powerful word of God. And by faith Abel offered unto God a, most, a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying to his gift. And, while, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Cain was dead. But because he was righteous, he was, his blood was speaking from the ground. He was alive. He was dead, but he was alive because God heard his voice of his blood from the ground. When we are righteous, we may die, but we will, let, we will live. We will live. When we are righteous, that's why Jesus says, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. When we are righteous, we cannot die. Abel was righteous in the eyes of God. God testifying by the gift, by the sacrifice that Abel offered unto God, God testified that it was righteous. And by it he being yet dead speaketh. How can a dead man speak unless he is righteous? How can a dead man live unless he is righteous? Righteousness is in faith. Is having faith in God. Righteousness is doing what is right in the eyes of God. So, in continuing, it talks about, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see the death. 
and was not found because God translated him. Enoch was the patriot of all and he had it, he pleased God. Enoch walked with God as so should we. Enoch walked with God, Enoch talked with God, Enoch had a personal relationship with God. Enoch had faith in God. Enoch knew God. Enoch was righteous. And because he was righteous, the Bible says he was translated. He came out of life into life. He was transfigured from life into life because he had faith in God and he walked with God and he loved God and he served God. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Enoch and Elijah was the only two patriots prophets that leave this earth without seeing death. They were changed. And you know, when we talk about Jesus is coming again, we're talking about the rapture of the church. We're talking about Jesus returning with power and great glory. And we're talking about we, the children of God, will be translated. Even as Noah was translated, even as Elijah, because we know the story of Elijah, how God took him with chariots on fire. So when we talk about the rapture of the church, this is not nothing unusual when it comes to God, that he can just take us from life into life, from the um, terrestrial life into the celestial life. It's a metamorphosis, as it's called. You know, we see a metamorphosis in a natural sense when a caterpillar is um, transferred into a butterfly. We know, this, we know well that when a caterpillar dies, it is turned into a butterfly. It is, it, is trans it is a metamorphosis. And metamorphosis has been going on because that was like when God translated Enoch. He took him from terrestrial to celestial. And so, so shall it be. And by faith we know, by faith we know. I say by faith we know. That's how our faith needs to be. Not I believe, but we know. By faith we know. We know that we shall be changed. And the Apostle Paul says we shall be changed. At this first trump. Because the dead in Christ shall rise and we who are alive shall be caught up. Hallelujah. Caught up. Enoch was caught up. He was translated. Elijah was caught up through faith in God Almighty. Because God had translated him. It says, for before he, his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Isn't it wonderful when we have the testimony that we please God? Isn't it great when we have a testimony? We can say, I please God. He, Enoch, had a testimony that he pleased God. Abraham had this testimony, although he was not translated, but he had the testimony because he was a friend of God. You know, we want to know God through faith. Faith is the avenue. Faith is the doorway to know God. Faith is the doorway to step into all, all our dreams, our aspiration, our hope. Our blessing, faith. Because all these patriots and prophets, they died with a testimony that they pleased God. Through faith. But he went on to say now in verse 6, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it says, 
but without faith but without faith it is impossible to please him without faith so how much do we need faith how much do we need faith if we want to serve God if we want to please God how much do we need faith we need faith as much as we need the air that we breathe as the water that we drink when we are thirsty we need faith it is so important that because without faith we cannot we cannot have a testimony like Enoch that we please God we cannot have a testimony like Abel that we please God we need to have faith in all things Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to, to God must believe that he is. He that cometh to God, anyone that cometh to God must, must believe that he is. What does it mean, he is? That he exists, that he is the creator of all things, that he has all power, that there's nothing impossible for him to do, and so many things. He's, he reigns eternally, he is above all, he is in all. He that cometh unto God must believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now there's a word to chew on. A rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently. Because we can, anyone can say, I love the Lord, I, you know, I serve the Lord, I, you know, and th diligently. Is a reward of them that diligent. How do we how do we diligently seek him? We diligently seek him by knowing him through his word. We diligently seek him by communicating with him on a regular basis. Talk to him. Tell him thanks. Give him praise. Tell him. Lord, I love you. Say, Jesus, I love you. Oh, Lord, you're so great. You're so wonderful. You have done so much for me. Talk to him. He'll understand. He hears your cry. And that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Once we diligently seek him, we will be rewarded. We will be rewarded with the blessings. We will be rewarded that our need is supplied, whatever it may be, financially, physically, you know, I mean, so many things. And every one of us, it doesn't matter, it does, every one of us has a need. Every one of us. As a need as long as we are in this world as long as we are in this physical body we have a need and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him he will supply our need and our need is a daily need we may maybe sometimes men know that we need something but God knows what we need and when we seek him diligently, he will supply those needs. And verse 7 talks about Noah. It says, by faith, Noah. Noah, the patriot, the great patriot of all. God looked around on the earth and the heart of man was, oh, the heart, the heart of man was evil, wicked. But God found a man, 
by the name of Noah. And God, he, God knew Noah because Noah loved God. Anyone that loves God, God knows you. God eyes are upon you. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous and his ears is open to their cry. And when God looked on the evil that was going on in the days of Noah, uh, he said, no, this has to stop. And so he found Noah to be a man of faith, a man who trusted in him, a man who loved him, a man who served him. And says, by faith, Noah, being warned of, of God, of things that not seen as yet, moved with fear. So God found Noah, and God said to Noah, the wickedness of this earth has come up before me, and I will destroy this earth. And he told Noah what to do. He said, build me an ark of gopher wood. Pitch it inside and outside, because I will cause rain upon this earth. More rain, more rain, and this earth will be over flood, overflow, and I will destroy every living thing upon this earth. And when Noah heard it, the Bible says, being warned of God, he, he was warned of God, what God was going to do. So the Bible says, he moved with fear. He moved with fear when he realized that God is going to wipe out mankind because of their evil. When he's going to wipe out everything upon the earth and he's going to start afresh. Noah moved with fear, prepared an ark. He prepared an ark to save his house. When we know that Jesus is coming, we must prepare ourselves as Noah prepared the ark. And the Bible says that for 120 years Noah was building the ark to take every living a one, a peer of every creature. Now think about that. He had to take a peer of every bird, every fish, every uh, everything. Well, I don't know. I think the fish was okay. I think, but the birds and the animals. All those that are on the ground, the, uh, all, the, all the animals we can think of, he took all of them into the ark. Because God wanted to preserve his creation. And then, by faith, he built the ark. And when the time was come, God tell him to go inside the ark. And when Noah went inside the ark, God shut the door. Hallelujah. Bible says, when God has shut a door, no man open it. And when he opened any door, no man shut it. And I could just imagine that when God shut the door of the ark, that people wanted, saw the rain. Can you imagine rain is coming and rain is coming and it's coming up to your, coming up to your ankle, it's coming up to your knee, it's coming up to your... Um, <laughs> You're coming, to, you're coming up to your waist, you're coming up to your shoulder. And when, you know, people start to say, what are we going to do? And everybody, I, I think people maybe remember Noah then, that Noah built the ark, and I think everybody might have been flooding towards the ark, and maybe knocking and said, open, open, and let us in. But God has shut the door. And even though Noah might in himself want to open the door, but God, God has shut the door, and so they all perish. Through faith, through faith, Noah could save himself and his family. Through believing in the Word of God, through obeying the Word of God, through acting on the Word of God. Through faith, he prepared the ark. And they, was, they might have been wondering, what is this man doing? 
building an ark to sail on the dry ground. What is it? I, I imagine they mocked him and jailed him. And even now, as you know, you tell people about Jesus, they probably look at us and say, what are we talking about? But even then they were saying to Noah, what is this man building an ark to sail on dry land? Or what's, what is all this? But only realize when the rain begin to fall and the water begin to reach up to their nostrils or up to their shoulder, then they realize it was too late. There is a time when it will be too late. But if we have faith in God, if we trust in the living God, we have no need to fear because God will keep us. And because of this, it says, by this he condemned the world and became here of the righteousness which is by faith. He became here of righteousness which is by faith. And then now, and by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place that he should after receive an inheritance, obeyed. See, faith is obedient. When God talked to us, and we need to listen to the voice of God. When God talked to us, let us hear the voice of God and obey. Because Abraham was among his own people, and he heard the voice of God said, Abraham, come out from your own people to a land that I will show you. And Abraham heard the voice of God and obeyed. Didn't know what, where he was going. He didn't know what he was going to inherit. But he obeyed the voice of God. And he went out. Knowing not whither, knowing, not knowing whither he went, he went out and he took his nephew um, Lot with him. And he went out of his own people to a place where God has prepared for him. By faith he sojourned into a land of promise, as in a strange country, and it may sound familiar to some of us who are in a land of, or in a strange country. Sometimes we may find ourselves in a strange country, but even if we find ourselves in a strange country, God is there to open up the doors of prosperity, of grace and mercy and love, everything. We don't worry about where we are. He never worried about being in a strange country, but as long as he knew that God was with him, that was enough for him. By faith, he sojourned into the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob. Tabernacles. Like a tent. They were sojourning. They were moving on from one place to another. God has prepared for them a place. They were dwelling in tabernacles. He was dwelling with tabernacles with Jacob and Isaac. Isaac was his son. Jacob was his grandson. They didn't dwell together, but they all was dwelling in tabernacles. They hear with him of the same promise. Now it says here in verse 10, which is a very interesting line, For he looked for a city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. So Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, as they were on this earth, they were looking for a city a city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. That is to say that they knew that there were strangers and sojourners here on this earth. They knew that this earth 
had no foundation. They knew that one day this earth would be no more. They were looking for a city which has foundation. This world has no foundation. The Bible says they were looking for a city eternal in the heavens. Which builder and maker is God? So these patriots and prophets, even though they were here on the earth, their inspiration, aspiration, and their hope, and their faith was in a better place what God had prepared for them. They look for a city because the city that we are have our hope in has foundation. Heaven has foundation. The place that Jesus says, I'm gone to prepare for you, that where I am, he may be also. That city has foundation. There is no foundation down here. And this is what the patriots and the prophets realized through faith. That they were strangers and sojourners in this world. And we should see ourselves in the same light that we are here today and one day we will by faith enter a city which has foundation whose builder and maker is God praise God what a wonderful God we serve what a great God He says, and I'm going to stop here. Um, and he went on to say that through faith, they will also receive strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. You see, when we stand on the promises of God, my brethren, when we stand on the promises of God, everything is well. All is well. Songwriter says, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you, brethren. I'm going to stop there. God bless you. God bless you. Um, it's a wonderful day. And I understand that everybody is enjoying the, the, the nice and wonderful day so thank you for joining us tonight who will join us this evening may God bless you keep you cause your face his face to shine upon you and peace be with you I'm just going to close a short prayer God bless you Father we thank you Father we praise you we bless your holy name thank you for your love thank you for your mercy thank you for your goodness Bless us, keep us, guide us, and protect us through the course of the week and help us to draw nearer to you. We give you praise, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.